So we're getting really close to the end of the plans that we have for the fuselage. Um, you know, steps 35, 36, and 37. And we, we kind of did, started going out of order on the sections because, of course, we think we know better than Vans does. Of course. But we had a plan. Um, it, if you've been watching this channel at all, you know that we're really bold on how we've painted the, in the interior of the airplane. You know, surprisingly, a lot of people have said they don't like our red. Uh, then they can build their own airplane and paint theirs the color they want because <laughs> we like our red. <laughs> um, I get it. And the first paint, the first red that we put down, we knew it was going to be 100% covered uh, by the, um, the classic aero interior that we've ordered. We did get an email. They're working on it. Mm. Kind of made one last little mod, upgraded. And got the some, stitching. Yeah, some uh, red stitching on black, and it's, it's beautiful. Can't wait to see it. Um, but, so we knew most of the interior is red, just means we're going to see it when we do inspections and things, but it won't be every day. I'm mostly just painting for protection. So when we started working on the Ford fuselage and the roll bar, we knew we were going to do another... Uh, paint cycle. Uh, so at first we got the Ford fuselage, basically the instrument panel. Granted, this is another thing that's not going to be seen except for when you're under the panel looking up. <laughs> but we wanted to get that painted um, nice to match, so we brought, brought out the same paint system, went down to Tasco and bought some more red, and we decided since the first time went so easy, we got this, right? Yeah, but our strategy was a little bit different this time. So instead of dragging everything to my next door neighbor's house, we had the paint booth. We decided to do this out in the driveway. Uh, we tried to do it early in the morning when the winds were calm and things were ready. Um, we went failed. Well, yeah, we ended up failing. We, but we went to work and prepped uh, using similar prep that mm -hmm. we did. On the first time, um, you know, a lot of Scotch Bright um, degreaser, um, and you know, Scotch Bright to sand it down, degreaser to get it nice and clean, uh, and uh, all you have to do is spray. Now, when we put the Ford fuselage together, we were really debating the order that we're gonna we wanted to build it up as much as possible, so as many rivets as possible would get made. So we definitely skipped around in the sections and we put the, the, the Ford instrument panel together much more where the instructions tell you to start building it in place and start riveting it to the airframe. We wanted it more together. Um, I think it's gonna work. Um, it's definitely um, going to be a challenge uh, when we do the final assembly. But we do not want to rivet the Ford fuselage to the fuselage until the very last minute. Um, I know we're not going to get all the avionics in there and then rivet it because you're not going to reach everything. But I really want the avionics here to test it and to play that Jenga puzzle to decide when is the right time to rivet that Ford fuselage together. Um, so it was the side rails and the Ford fuselage that we were going to paint. We hadn't even thought about the roll bar at that point. We go outside, get everything prepped, lay it outside, and start spraying. What ended up happening? Well, the winds picked up, for one. Yep. Two, I must have forgotten every little bit that I learned about how to use a paint gun and how to set it up right, because it just the, wasn't getting the spray pattern. It wasn't that I spraying wanted. right. So it was really beady and um, orange peely and just kind of flat out bad. bad. <laughs> we even got halfway through it and I was just, I was like, I died, I died. You could just see it in his face. There was, you, we, it was just major defeat. Yeah, major defeat. I honestly, I was like, building's not for us. Let's throw, throw the pieces away. Th throw the airplane away. I, 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 was, I was hating life that day. It was a bad day. But we ended up trying to finish the paint job. And my reward for sticking through painting was the wind picked up. And took some of the plastic that we had on the table, flipped it on top of uh, one of the side rails that was freshly painted. 
So it wasn't even the paint job was not even it salvageable. Was, no, there was there was nothing we could do. To, it, everything had to be redone. So we just kind of set it aside um, the, for a while. The Ford <laughs> fuselage, uh, the the instrument panel, it's good enough. It's going to be covered. It's going to be covered, but it, if you like, I'm standing eight feet away from it right now looking at it, it looks great. Uh, it's one of those where, because we assembled so much, the spray gun won't hit every nook and cranny in the back. So there's definitely flanges that have um, the, the base primer uh, bleeding through. But that's okay. It's Like I said, you're not going to see it. It's going to be covered up. Uh, but what were we going to do with the side, side rails? Because we knew that the side rails will be visible in our uh, build. Yeah, we knew we had to redo those. So we just set them aside. Then we went to work on the roll bar, started assembling that, and we made the decision that we were going to paint the side rails and the roll bar with the help of our friend down at Lockhart Airport, who is a amazing painter, uh, lots of experience in uh, automotive uh, collision repair and uh, painting there, uh, and a lot of experience painting airplanes. Um, he's not a doesn't have a business painting airplanes, but he's paint, painted several airplanes before. And in our local area, if you need something painted right, you go see Al. So we went to go see Al. <laughs> I messaged him and I was like, Help, please. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> Al's been a good friend for several years and he hadn't come out to see the build yet. So he first came out here and looked at our uh, paint job and he's like, Yeah, you done. Done screwed up. <laughs> that doesn't look good. So he introduced us to paint stripper. Talk about a gnarly little nasty substance. Yes. Went to AutoZone and I mean, it's called, uh, it was by Rust Oli and it was called Aircraft Stripper. That stuff, it does what it says. So we um, went through um, Al's um, instructions and uh, you get a disposable paintbrush. Uh, actually, use a decent quality paintbrush, but you're not using it ever again when you're done. Um, and we, uh, you paint this paint stripper onto the part and then wrap it in a, we use a trash bag, but wrap it in some plastic because you want those fumes to stay in there. You don't want it to all off gas. Let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes, take it out, and then you can scrape that, it just peels right off. Ugh. It's nasty. It, um, and we we at home did about two rounds of it yeah. to, to get it. And I, I thought, I was like, I'm good. I got this stripped. And I knew there were some edges that would probably sand down or whatever. And I took it and uh, it turns out I've talked to some of my friends who've done projects with Al to um, Al's a perfectionist. He is, he's got an eye for this that none of us do. He took one look at us. Yeah, we're gonna keep stripping. So he breaks his stripper <laughs> out and uh, really got it clean. Then we went through this multi-step process where we um, took 400 grit sandpaper, sanded it down nice and smooth. Then we took some cleaner that he had and really cleaned the aluminum to be bare, you know, bare, um, you know, uh, the bare aluminum, make it nice and clean. You know, we had gloves on, so our oils weren't getting on it. Really cleaned it up, so we got um, all those pieces ready to go. Then the pieces that we had primed with the Rust-Oleum self-etching primer, um, we sat there with 400 grit sandpaper and just sanding it down. And at one point, he had to go step away for a few minutes and said, finish sanding the roll bar. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it just perfect, just perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make Al proud. He's going to be super proud of me. Get it nice and sanded. I'm like, okay, this is beautiful. He comes back and looks like, Keep nah, going. Close. Nah, he said, just give it to me. <laughs> oh! I, he has this eye. And it's funny because after he did it, I'm like, it, it was clear as day to me. It was like, I, I see what he was seeing. Uh, but, you know, my mind, paint covers everything. If you do a bad job, just paint it. You, you won't see it. And Al really showed me, it's like, that's not how that works. Paint actually doesn't cover anything. If you have a small blemish, like a small little bump in there that's not smooth, <coughs> that small little bump, you're gonna see, you're gonna see that through the paint. 
Yeah. So it's like you really have to have a very smooth, clean surface before you start painting. Makes sense, but you know, here I was thinking paint fixes everything. Now we go back and look at the first paint job we did, and I was like, I, I, I now see why it's not as smooth as what we ended up doing. Yeah. So it was several hours of prep. Um, I know you, you didn't sleep well the night before, so you went to the FBO and took a nice nap while we did all the prep work. Sorry. It's okay. It's, yeah, you're doing the hard work here. You know, you're, you're 39 weeks into uh, uh, expanding our workforce. <laughs> Uh, I, it's no brand trust. You didn't want to be around for that prep work. It wasn't, wasn't the fun part, but it was, it was necessary. Um, and then of course he's got a nice paint set up in his, uh, uh, hangar there. So then it finally got time to do the painting. And the other big trick that he had is he hangs out everything from like, um, wire, whether it's safety wire or like clothes hangers, but you hang it so you have better access to it versus trying to do it on a table. That was a game changer. It's like 360 access. Yes. It was, uh, and then not only do you hang it, but then you tie a piece of safety wire to the bottom of it so you can hold it as you paint. Um, it was, you know, it's, the, the key to doing a good job with anything is knowing all the tricks and just having that skill to do it. You learned a few tricks that day. That I did. So he um, he did most of the painting for us because uh, he used our paint gun. So it was, it was a good paint gun. Uh, granted, he's got the super fancy professional guns. Uh, ours is the best gun you can get at Harbor Freight. This is the job. He said it was, it was a good gun. It's like the, where your gun's going to fail is after you use it for the 6,000th time. Oh. Yeah. You know, um, whereas, you know, the fancier guns... Um, hold up longer so um but when you're doing it professionally like he is uh that makes sense yeah so we got it painted but he he, he left one part for me to paint and i was still kind of like scared to like have one of our parts look different than the other but he, he guided me through it we got it got it painted he did the second coat on it it was like the right tempo the right angle yeah it's it's uh i would love to sit here on this channel and tell you everything, how to be an expert painter. It's never going to happen. Uh, you need to go find someone like Al, find someone who's done this for years. They just know tips and tricks and uh, have that technique that you're not going to get any way else. So, but we got, we got it all painted. It looks beautiful. Um, it's, we want it again. Our strategy has been build as much of it as we can set as many rivets as we can so they get painted. Um, now we still have some unpainted rivets after we put it together. And we have the little touch-up kit. We do have the little touch-up kit. I'm like, still- I'm little, hesitant to use it though. Still a little scared to use it because it's like, it, it, is it gonna stand out like a sore thumb or is it gonna look good? I don't know. But you gotta sand it down to like owl standard. You gotta sand the rivets The down. rivets? The paint won't stick. It won't look as good unless they're really taken down. So it's uh, it's not it's not like you just take it and go bop and it's done. It, if you do that, that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like you went bopping. You need to paint the rivets before we put them in then. We can try that. How does this work? I don't know. But oh. then, then if you buck it, it's, yeah. And some, a lot of them are pull rivets. I don't know how that would work. So we may just have some non-painted rivets. Um, it still looks good. I think so. Uh, but man, does that look amazing. It's just, it's like the the smoothness to it, the glossiness to it. The, uh, and these are things that will be visible in our build. You will see this red when we are flying. Uh, this is not- Underneath the canopy. Underneath the canopy and the side rails. It's gonna, it's, it, it was really important to get done right. So uh, it was well worth the uh, afternoon going down there and um, um, and taking care of Al for his time. We really appreciate that. So how about building that roll bar? How was that? It wasn't that bad. It was kind of an interesting thing where you, you assemble half the roll bar, put some doublers on. Oh, where was that second doubler? Oh yeah. I don't know if we lost it or if it just never came, but. We checked it off in the inventory. So there's a doubler that's on, um, 
one goes on the front of the roll bar, one goes on the back. We pulled one out and prepped it, primed it like we normally do. <coughs> and then realized that we should have had two. Yeah, the second one came and it's like, crap, we don't have another one. So my instinct was go to Van's store, find one and order it. Mine um, was not because I didn't want to wait around to get it apart. So I suggested fabrication. So we actually fabricated that second doubler. We, it was pretty simple. It's a square re rectangle with 16 or so holes, uh, maybe 21 holes. Um, so we were able, we had scrap aluminum that we've that ordered. The exact width. Yep, the exact thickness. Uh, I forgot what size it was, but we um, made sure it was the, the made, made out of the same material. It was scrap aluminum that we ordered from Van, so we know it's aircraft grade and the right stuff. It's, uh, I mean, it's the same roll that uh, that original one was probably made out of. Uh, we did not laser cut them, did we? No. We, we used a drill press. Um, so then it was just trace it, trace it, do a rough cut and then use the 3M wheel to um, fine tune it and it's made it exactly the same. Pop it on the drill press, put a match drill all the holes. And um, I even wrote the part number on there for you. Oh, sweet. You put a little sticker and some blue on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we fabricated our own doubler. I, it It's simple. Uh, I, we're here making a big deal out of we cut our rectangle and put some holes in it. But you know, it's, it's our first full fabrication of uh, a missing piece. A missing piece. I guess we did some fabrication for the modified uh, flat motor that we did. Okay. So, yeah. so it's not our first fabrication, but um, yeah, sure. You know, a couple hour, about an hour, uh, versus uh, ordering it and waiting for it to show up. About a week. Yeah. So then we get the roll bar all together, and then the first time it's like, okay, you slide it on top of the uh, the bases for the roll bar. That was really. I don't know if we were just putting it in crooked or things were misaligned, but. It did it not. It was a pain. Work. It, uh, we're, we're down to putting Bowie lube on it, uh, putting our fingers in there. To, there's uh, the the doubler that's in there that holds the two sides together. Trying to push those aside to get it on. It was really tough to get it to seat on. So we even ended up taking a 3M wheel and a um, angle grind, or a, you know, I guess an angle grinder um, air yeah. tool. And we chamfered the edges of the base to give it just a little bit of a rounded edge. So it could slide on just a tad. Yep. And then with some Bowie lube, we were able to get it on both sides. Um, of course, we did some searching on YouTube for other builders to see, did they struggle with it? And there was a reference to, yeah, it was a pain, but watching the YouTube video kind of slid right on. Yeah. It wasn't as much of a pain as we were having. We probably spent hours and hours trying to get that on there. Yeah. So once we chamfered those edges and kind of filed down the, uh, you know, just filed it down to make it so there's, you know, we're talking millimeters if very, that. Very, very minimal. Um, we got it on and then it was like, well, after it's painted, this is gonna be even worse. Of course, we didn't paint the inside of the, the roll bar, um, but when it came time to put it on the final time, it slid right on like it was nothing. Yeah. Nope. Well, we did leave it sitting on and then we took it off to go paint. Yeah, I probably I don't helped. know if it like adjusted itself, like aligned left, nope. right. But it's if you get to that stage and you're struggling with it, um, no, you're not alone. Uh, lubricate it. Um, you know, there's one point where you're using a mallet to press down on it. Um, they, the plans do talk about how the first time you get it on, it may be um bent a little or i guess um uh twisted a little bit and they have instructions to use a mallet to um to true it up that that is important but once it, once it's on it's on yeah it was crazy how flimsy all these little pieces were until they all got put together and you're like man this is stout. yeah this plane is getting more and more rigid as time goes on um I'm wondering if when we're building the roll bar, if we put a little bit of a twist in it, because I was trying my best to keep it flat and level, but there, there are times where we were, you know, struggling to get to things and flipping it around, but you know, lots of pull rivets, lots of uh, regular rivets. Lots uh, of countersinking. Lots of countersinking. Well, we <clears throat> also countersinked a little too much. 
uh, the bottom the bottom side on the Ford the Ford bottom side is not supposed to be countersunk and you're supposed to use uh, 470 rivets there. Um, we're in countersinking mode, so are we countersunk without thinking about it? No problem, we just switched to 426 flush rivets. I'm actually glad we did, even though you still got AN, uh, not AN's, uh, LP4's pull rivets on the back side that stick out. Yeah. Um, it's still nice and, I, I kind of like, it. it's nice and flush. It's, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, but it's, Roll bars in, uh, side panels are Clecoed in right now. The side rails are Clecoed in right now. Yeah. Uh, eventually we'll start riveting all that together. Um, but uh, for now, we're really um, planning to move the fuselage out of the garage. Uh, we found a place to store it uh, for a couple months so that we can clear the garage out, get the wings out over here. Um, Take a closer look at the wings. Take a closer look at the wings. Uh, you know, our quick build wings most likely has laser cut parts in it. So we are waiting for uh, further updates from Vans on um, what what our next step is on that. If uh, we can't use those wings, that's gonna be a devastating blow for us. Uh, we're not even gonna talk about that right now. But, um, you know, where we see some of the artifacts of laser cut parts, they're very minimal cracking, if any. Um, it's mainly in the flaps and uh, aerolongs. Um, but uh, the quick build wings were inspected as they left the um, the factory. Uh, we're hoping if there's a problem in the, the wing structure themselves, it's gonna be in the forward ribs. Um, that And that, if we have to replace on a quick build wing, I don't know what Vans' plan is because that's not a simple little project. So um, I know that they've put some SBs, uh, service bulletins out for cracks on the uh, horizontal stabilizer and elevator. It's basically throw some fuel tank sealant in there to mm -hmm. around the cracks to fill it in. Um, we will see about that, but we do want to get started on the wings because I think at this phase, there's more stuff to do on the fuselage, but it's detailed work. And with the newborn in the house, we're really thinking starting with bigger projects is um, going to be more manageable for us. And it doesn't matter if we finish this perfectly before moving on to the wings. Building a step is building a step. That's one more step closer to us flying this airplane. It doesn't matter necessarily what order we do it in. So yeah. main goal is just forward progress right now. Yes. Make progress on whatever you can. So that is our current update on where we're at with uh, roll bars, forward fuselage, uh, paint fiascos and success stories. Um, you know, if you need help painting, feel free to reach out to us and we'll tell you the wrong way to do it. Um, but find find someone better than us to find out the right way. Yeah. I wish, wish, it's something that if I had more time, I would like to become good at painting. I don't see that happen. That's not some- uh, When do you come up with all this time? I don't, that's why it's not gonna happen. <laughs> so, well, thank you for watching us on 14 Victor Echo. We'll see you next time.